stream is going. I'm waiting for it to show up. There we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adventure on So Many Levels. We're going to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons! <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, everybody! <laughs> I'm Christiana Ellis. I am the Dungeon Master. Our players tonight, Chooch Schubert as Otterkey. Hello, hello. Starla Hutchton as Nirakina Ethu. Greetings and salutations. Jenny Meltzer as Cadence of the Water. Hi there. James Meltzer as Ket of the Sands. I'm sitting here asking myself, whatever happened to predictability? The Milkman, the Paperboy. Even TV. <laughs> Your audio is different. Underwater. Uh, some, yeah, it's something's muffled and it sounds like maybe right. it sets the wrong mic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut down and go back and come All back right. in. I'll, I'll be back, everybody. We await your return. Actually, we don't. We're gonna keep it going. Uh, Mark Kilcoyle <laughs> as Alaric Copperbeard. You know, all kids are hotheads. These just happen to be literal, is all. Mm -hmm. uh, and last but not least. Jadzia Axelrod as Mugen the Magnificent, although temporarily in Ket's spot because uh, when someone leaves the call, it shifts everybody around. It's a whole thing. <laughs> What's up, party people? <laughs> Welcome back. Hello, is that any better? No, nope. it's the same. Nope. <laughs> Hold Must on. be using the wrong mic. Yeah, it does yeah. sound like it, it's set it to is. a mic that's in, in a drawer or something. <laughs> uh, oh, wait a it minute. could be your headphones. Do they have a microphone built yeah, in? I'm, yeah, that's exactly what it is. How's that? Is that better? Ah, ah yeah. much yes. better. Yes. Must be <laughs> ah. Solved. I knew we could do it, everybody. Go team. Hashtag polymorph problems. <laughs> so, let's talk a little bit about what happened last time. You all remember? Yes. Oh. Now we can move on. <laughs> we were playing in the bar. Hot Springs episode. Cocktails. Ah. Um, so uh, you all had, uh, I'm trying to, I'm literally at the moment trying to remember what you were doing before. Oh, so you, you spent some time trying to resolve what needed to happen with Melicanth, who seems to be suffering from some intraplanar malady, likely brought on by the fact that there's technically two of her in the universe right now. Right, 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 right. Yes. Um, and ultimately, uh, although you were able to temporarily suppress the effects she was suffering, uh, allowing her to have a conversation with you, it seemed impermanent, and therefore you allowed her and Pishwish also stayed behind, allowing them to refreeze in time so as to not advance that until you were ready to deal with it. But in the meantime, Mugen has a plan for how you could foil any future attempt from Jinxie to try to sneak into your lives and wreak havoc again. This it's plan, a pretty good plan. It's a good plan. <laughs> it's a good plan. You've got part one completed. Part one entailed uh, obtaining some stones and some magic soap from a bathhouse to the spirits. The idea is that anyone washed with the soap is permanently marked in such a way that if they approach the stones, the stones will glow. That way, if Jinxie were to ever come close to you, your, the stone would glow, which does mean that you kind of have to keep the stone on hand, but technically... <laughs> it's not a perfect system, but no one else had any ideas. <clears throat> yes. uh, but so you visited this bathhouse to the spirits and you all had to do chores in order to earn the gift of magic soap but you did. And so we, we left off with all of you uh, kind of deciding that uh, you, you, you might actually need a bath, or at least Alaric did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was, that, was, that was dirty work for sure. Mm. 
Hmm. Rushama might want to soak. Who knows? <laughs> I'm not washing Alaric's beard. <laughs> Takes more deft hands than you have, even in this form. <laughs> so the spirit of the bathhouse does tell you that because of your service to the bathhouse, uh, you will be permitted to take a bath, but that means, first of all, you have to follow the protocol, which is to go and clean yourselves off up in the upper washrooms before you sit in the springs, because otherwise you just make those filthy with all of your you gotta, leavings. You gotta right. take a bath before you can take a bath. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm all Man. about it. It's like when you go to the pool and you gotta take a shower before you get in the pool. Yeah. But I mean, the pool's not a bath. Right. Last of the Look, showers, are on all It's all water. Well, but it's not the same water. That's right. Yes. No, I agree. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. So okay. d it, who, who is that? Is everybody going to? Yeah, oh, yeah, I will race to the showers. I am all about this. I mean, nice. when are we ever going to get the like, chance you see Archie to flip in a bath towel? In the, <laughs> the God's Spa. <laughs> yes. Like, oh, yeah. All right. So, uh. I think that we can probably, um, I think that there is magic of this place that allows you to appear in whatever bathing garb you would choose. So I will offer to each of you to describe how uh, your, your character appears as they prepare to uh, go sit in one of these uh, um, hot, hot springs oh my god Ket is dressing in an old 1930s one piece you know short tank top bathing suit knitted with stripes on it oh yeah totally and just for flavor he'll have a fedora on sure why not nice. i feel like it would get all sweaty but you know hey yeah hey, hey you know <laughs> a, a dave robeson fedora yeah, that's it. There you go. Right. Yeah. Like Archie, just full nude swim cap. <laughs> swim cap. All right. Check the hair. Are there is there holes for the horns or is the horns around? Oh yeah, there's holes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Just large condom like shapes on the hat. <laughs> yeah. It's you really protects like, like the drains and the you know. See, I was imagining actually a swim cap that didn't previously have holes for the horns. <laughs> right. <laughs> it does now. <laughs> right. Uh, Mugen is completely nude, but for modesty's sake, there is a glowing aura around his crotch. So you can't see anything, but there's <laughs> intense distracting light. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fabulous. <laughs> You can't not look at it. Right. But there's <laughs> but nothing you to actually, see. Yeah. You can't see anything. We can't see anything. I'm doing this for you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. All all I can picture is so like in the, the, the Dragon Age games, whenever they're naked, they really just have like bandages like mm -hmm. <laughs> around their bits. I, I was yeah. thinking I can't think we of could also, anything else right now. <laughs> I think what we also are going to imagine is the TV show version of this, where anyone who is nude and doesn't ha otherwise have some uh, glowing aura to obscure anything, it's it's steamy in here, right? So there's little wisps of steam that just happen <laughs> to be in front of the appropriate bits. Have like I'm a just... floating black bar, like in uh, in in Scott Pilgrim, right. when her mouth does the thing. <laughs> it's like actually, I'm just if wearing a toga. Stopped. There's spirits that do that, but you know, <laughs> a toga. Yeah. Nice. So Alaric, unless you unattune to the sword, you still look like you have all the armor on. <laughs> yeah, that's the weirdest thing, really. I, I'm, I'm wearing. Yeah. It's my 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 uh, my body axe spray, you might say. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> that physically hurt, Mark. Physically hurt. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so uh, I think that uh, it's you know the, these pools are are 
are very nice. It's basically kind of a fancy hot tub. There's there's some kind of herbs in it, so it just sort of smells kind of, of flowers instead of, you know, sulfur or something. Uh, and uh, it's it's just it's nice. You know, you saw you saw how nice and beautiful it was in this place and uh, in some respects it's kind of like having it all to yourself, but in other respects it's like having frozen statues of all sorts of weird spirits that wouldn't like it if they knew you were there staring at you because they, <laughs> they're all time stuff. <laughs> so whether that is uh, comforting that they're not moving or creepy that they are not moving, I, I leave to you. I think that's in the eye of the beholder. Not that a there's a beholder creepy. here. I mean, a little sexy, to be honest. <laughs> It's kind of like uh, um, exhibitionism, but uh, sort of free of any uh, expectation of consequences. Exactly. Yeah. And like Mugen is used to people not wanting him to be anywhere. So the fact that they don't want him there but can't do anything is very relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. So. I don't know if any of you have uh, have have business or conversations you would like to have here, but otherwise, I think you're just you are because time has stopped. You are at your leisure to spend as much time there as you like. Yeah, nothing in particular for me. <clears throat> I spend most of the time underwater yeah. because I can breathe underwater mm -hmm. now with you know just can. So. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I never get to use it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and I mean, complete mm -hmm. submersion, perfect temperature, like, it's pretty amazing. I'll be spending a fair amount of time combing out my beard, yeah, tending to it properly. Yeah. Not in the water, I hope. Do you braid it, or? Uh, probably, yeah. I kind of wish I had now, just to Aww. properly <laughs> cosplay. <laughs> so I, I expect that you all pass a uh, relaxing uh, couple of hours uh, you know enjoying the baths um, but uh, as at your at your readiness you have the soap that you came here for yep. I gotta say, as you know, as missions go, this is this one's worked out pretty well. Well, this it was just wasn't getting ready. Absolutely terrifying. This was just getting ready for the regular. The big thing. Oh, it's yeah, true. It's, it's it's not over I mean, yet, so maybe. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. Usually, when people give us a task, it takes a lot longer, and there's a lot more danger involved. Right, and there's more contract negotiations. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Well, the little buggers were pretty much on fire. There was a few scars that, well, actually no scars, I suppose, but could have been. Yeah, came out fine. You guys should follow my plans more often. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. But you did How write this How often do time. you make plans? <laughs> All right, well, plan is very loose, okay? Um, <laughs> schemes, whims. You should follow my whims more often. <laughs> it's not sounding better. <laughs> but it is more accurate. Yeah. It's nice to take a break. Even if it's in this strange in-between state of everything. There's a lot of work left ahead, though. But it'll wait for now. Yeah, I mean, what do we got to do? Like... We got to tag Jinxie with the soap. We got to stop the Demon Lord. We got to get time stopped to get started again. Am I missing anything? I mean, there's a whole list. Well, you've crossed off of some of those things already. Yeah. I mean, have we taught you happiness yet, Chuckles? You seem pleased. <laughs> yeah, I'm Let's still working cross, on it. Let's just cross it off the list and say it. How about done. we don't? I will say when I'll we're get done. There. That's my goal. I say when it's done. <laughs> All right. Yeah. 
No, that's that's good. We'll just we'll just shove that one off to you. Yeah. There's got to be better uses of your time or not time. Don't you tell me what my time is worth? <sighs> Fine. Maybe you'd have better time working on Ket and his um. Let's just say uh, identity crisis. You know, another really cool way to find happiness, Alaric, is not to look at other people's faults. Think about that. And then I yeah. walk away. Maybe she should consider her own advice. I don't know. <laughs> I already walked away. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, mutter it to myself? <laughs> I'm just amazed at how well this bathing suit is sticking to my muscles. <laughs> I think it literally was made for you. You would think, yeah. And I walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is just walking into, uh, you know, diff you know, Other separate rooms. corners of this uh, bathhouse and just kind of standing there because there's not really anywhere else to go. <laughs> I went back to the shower. <laughs> I went back in a circle around and looked at Alaric and just like, son of a... <laughs> <laughs> so what's next, guys? Yeah, how do we uh, get out of here? Do... do we have to go back the way we came? Whoa, what happened to me? Uh -oh. Oh, man. oh, sorry, that's... Um... You've been replaced with the list. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> so I, no, I, I like to see how valuable I am as a player. We know the priorities no, I, I, I was first. opening it to review it, and I for, I had forgotten that I had set it to appear on the, uh, the little uh, display. So in, in case you all were just sitting there in the springs talking about the items on the list, I'll, I can go through them. Uh, you had Save Pishwish, which is done. Figure out if gods or not. And I believe you kind of informally checked that off the list. Although it seems like it's still in question to me. I think that too. I think Alaric crossed that off the list. And yep. no one was looking. Mm. <laughs> that one was mine. Uh, <laughs> I took that one and I crossed it off the yeah. list. Uh, rebuild Ush Bithra. <laughs> which uh, still obviously on the list. But also kind of a long term thing. Uh Eliminate Jinxie, and uh, obviously you have a uh, another plan for that now. Uh, save Zareth, which is, uh, you know, still there. Uh, teach Alaric Happiness, still on the list. Restart time, beat the demon, deal with cultists. Uh, all with uh, Save Zareth, those are kind of, a lot of those are kind of all in the same kind of thing. Uh, find Elder Melicanth, you've got, uh, understand the quantum, pig of legend, hag on the loose, diamonds for Andri, tree council, rebuild Farusha, and then rebuild, return stolen moment, question mark, because it's unclear what that would actually entail. So, Okay. Uh, try, uh, there's actually one more thing that has occurred to me. Mm -hmm. um, wait, I'm, I'm, I mentioned it in our little player chat elsewhere, but <laughs> uh, so a, a few weeks back, there was a little um, thread dangled in front of Nira and Alaric uh, regarding uh, an old dwarven legend um, about a dwarven woman who had a spirit grow within her became the spirit something we're not really sure what's going on there um but yeah now i'm starting to wonder after melicamp's little um her her momentary lapse of where she was kind of like ranting babbling slightly incoherently um it was something else like specifically Alaric and I had encountered. So I think I would probably discuss that with um, with the others, like as we're, you know, just relaxing and stuff. Because um, now I kind of wish I would have put that on the list. I'll... <laughs> <laughs> it, it only just occurred to me tonight before we started. So <laughs> sure. does everyone kind of remember that? 
I mean, so the basic idea was that there was the um, uh, a, a dwarf named Greshta that this is kind of ancient dwarven lore, and uh, um, it she is one of the previous examples of a a dwarf who ends up with a spirit kind of bound inside her as opposed to tied to some environmental thing. And uh, it's believed that her conflict of, of how to deal with that in many ways did actually lead to the dwarves forming separate clans in different places instead of living all over, but uh, that she had also sealed herself away because she didn't actually want to be around all the other dwarves, but she did want them to be safe. And so there was kind of a some mysterious thing that happened that's now just a legend. Yeah, Sanctuary Basin. Mm -hmm. she? Yeah, Al Alaric had had an inkling that he could potentially find this place. Yeah, I mean, it's supposedly a place of legend, but it's underground. And... The axe is tied to, well, pretty much everything of Dwarven history. You don't understand what it's like to wield this thing. I, I've never really explained, I guess, but it's not like a weapon. Not really. It's more like, more like grabbing on to a river. And it's always moving, but you can sense the, the distance it's traveled to get to you. You can feel the, the ebbs and flows back up where it took a bend around a rock or, or fell down a, water, uh, a waterfall or the, the very springs and the, the snows at the top of the mountain where it melted. All of that is in that one instant of you holding on to this river. I can, I can feel it. The dwarven history kind of, I mean, I, I learned a lot when I was younger, but it's, it's like it's all flowing through me now. It's hard to grasp any one particular thing. It's more like it just sort of comes out in moments. But it's it's connected to everything underground, too. Um, it, it needs the starting connection, though, of something dwarven built, something built permanently by the dwarves. It's like that, that act of building that we've done ties us to the world, like everything that we've built has has that connection to everywhere else it's sort of the way that we are taught it anyway we know that the stone and the rock and the mountain are all important and sacred to us but it's one thing to be told that and another to, to feel it every time you hold on to this thing but with it i can take us to any place that's underground as long as i can find a, a dwarven stone to start with do we so, need to go underground? Well, if the, uh, the Sanctuary Basin was a, an ancient dwarven stronghold of sorts, uh, the, the, the tales seem to be a little confused about that. But tied to this legend of, of Grashta, it's where, it's where they had been and where they were ejected from and became the clans that exist today. I have a sense, when I heard the story... I have a sense of why Nirakin is interested in this, though. Because your connection to the mountain, Rashama, sounds very much like what she had gone through, <laughs> a spirit being in her, but inhabiting part of her, not necessarily in the same way, because, well, I don't, I don't want to speak for you, but you've always seemed to have a better relationship with Rashama than, than Greshta even though you complained about it for a long time, <coughs> it still was something you drew power from. I've, I've come to understand a bit more about it since then, too. But, um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know that it's something important and pressing. And I hadn't really counted it as something that we needed to do immediately, but uh, the fear in Melikant's voice just it bothers me and so I've been racking my brain trying to think of anything that might fit those circumstances I don't, I don't know 
well, I, I mean, just thought I would mention it. She was saying, put it back. I thought she was talking about the stolen moment. That was my first assumption, but... She specifically yeah. called out Nira and Alaric, which... Mm -hmm. I, I, there, was, there was something very specific about that. Yeah. You know, That's true. I mean, I know that the... The axe has been with me for a while, although its origins are, or its recent origins are a little sketchy. Looks over at Mugen, who was the one who kind of appeared and handed him the axe. Here's the thing, though. When she said that, you and Alaric are the people who woke her up. I mean, no, nobody else was really standing there. So, I mean, if you're the first person she sees, I mean, what's the likelihood that she's going to call out to you specifically? Yeah, I mean, maybe you know, you're just reading too much into it. Well, the thing is, she didn't know, seem I, to recognize us as such at first. Yeah, I thought I thought we were... I mean, we had gone first, but I thought we were kind of all in the room and she was looking around, but... It was a really maybe, small room. Like, we, yeah. I don't think we all fit in there. Yeah, it was just like the cell. So... Kent just rolls his eyes. It's always about Nira and, and the Laric. <laughs> Did you hear her? It was... That was kind of scary. No, no, I, I'm just. Teasing. No, I didn't because I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean, I kind of heard it over, but I mean, you were waking her up. She's, you know, her face was full of weird energy, like lightning. It was purple, and I mean, we could always go back to her and ask her to clarify herself. She, she tried, but yeah, she didn't. Yeah, that's true. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, and she's frozen at least, hopefully, between one moment of pain and the next. I don't want to bring on that next moment if we can avoid it. Yeah. <clears throat> when things are set straight, she'll hopefully be released from whatever. And then maybe she can clarify, and then you will know. I mean, there's a lot of things that maybe they're not for the rest of us. Maybe they're just for you and Alaric. You know, like, Ket and I need to find our people, but I would never ask you guys to go. I mean, that's not something I'd expect from you. Wait, didn't you we know, find your people? Aren't they at the city? Uh, we had a whole tribe. We, we mean like, our, we mean like our, our voyages pride, our adventuring group that we were with. You, you do mean, know that if you asked, I'd, I'd go. Yeah, I know. We would totally help you find your group. I mean, yeah. Well, you want to go now? Let's go now. Let's do this. I really want to like soap jinxy like Halloween windows right now. That's what <laughs> I want. <to> do. <laughs> yeah, I think something tells you all that uh, introducing a brand new mission when you haven't finished the last one could cause difficulties. <laughs> Especially with the DM. <laughs> it does kind of sound like that. Damn you I mean. You know, I'm I'm not saying that uh, this this strange impulse that you find must be obeyed, but you do get the feeling that there might be consequences if it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I was mostly I'm, I I discuss this now because it seems like the time for discussing things when you know we don't. No, 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 that's around. fine. I'm just saying, <laughs> as opposed to let's go do that right now instead of the thing we were in the middle of doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I know. I, I get it. I just, I just wanted to put a bug in everybody's ear, and, and uh, uh, I, I, just I am just teasing too. I, I, you, you all really can do whatever you want. I'm, I'm just kind of, <laughs> I'm teasing. Tell us something about them. Who were the people who were traveling with you? They were all cats. Magnificent cats. And we. We told them to go. I don't know if they did. I don't know. I don't remember. We found you in um, a cave in the plain of stone, didn't we? Earth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Were all of you there at that point? Or do you remember? Or we you were, but we knew that it was too dangerous and that something was going to happen. We knew that we were trapped, so we told them to go. We don't know what happened to them. Yeah. So all of you fought um, before finding them. The rest of uh, you know those who were there uh, fought an undead beholder that was not undead at the time that uh, Kat and Cadence mm -hmm. had originally gone there, 
but there was a moment where it seemed as though um, all was lost, and so, you know, it, Cat and Cadence sort of stayed behind to assure the escape of the others. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, because we couldn't, you know, we couldn't travel. They traveled because of me. So I have no idea what happened to them. Well, um, I mean, for all I know, they could all be dead. Maybe we thought they're, you know, ghouls or something. It was also a long time ago. They yeah. They just lived great lives. <clears throat> Had lots of uh, kittens. Yeah, maybe. Well, if we knew what plane of existence they're on, or if I even had, like, more knowledge kind of about them, I mean, I could give scrying a shot, but, like, it's been a really long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not something, like, super pressing. I just, it's something I would like to know for my own personal closure, like, what happened to them. Right now, we can do a lot because time is frozen. But yeah, that you won't know, always be the case. I wonder if Ket's best friend, Empress Salmonia, might know something. The book could probably tell her. Yeah. Just tell me what to ask her and I'll ask No, her. not right now. I mean, okay. we have other important things to okay, do. Okay, okay, okay. Calm down. <laughs> Can't hurt to know. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. but it's not like they're going to change anytime soon. Are all of you having this conversation like in the tub? Like sure. in, in the, uh, yeah. the springs? Okay. Uh, just, probably, uh, yeah. just for the mental image of it all. <laughs> There's probably like a random spirit like in the middle. So we're all like ducking around to like <laughs> talk to one another. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I don't know. It's just one of those things, you know, like, I mean, there's going to be a lot of things when all this is said and done that, you know, you and Alaric are going to have to do on your own. That Amethyst is going to have to do on their own. I mean, Mugen does a lot of stuff on his own. And that's okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got by for years on your own it's just one of those things you know like maybe that's something that when it comes down to it in the end it has nothing to do with what Melikant said and it's something that you and Alaric might need to do or Rashama well I think that's for later anyway you know oh yeah um, definitely we gotta maybe keep the true god within us is the friends we made along the way <laughs> just a counterpoint just a counterpoint well it isn't and it isn't nothing I'm not sure if it's a god but I think this has been an interesting trip yeah I mean we probably have years left yet before we're all done all this stuff a couple of cities to rebuild and you know whole world to set right could be we'll get there decades before we're done all that stuff it's probably a lot of lost dogs yeah <laughs> drop, drop things yeah. in wells and things yeah um alaric i love you man but i'm not helping you rescue lost dogs <laughs> I'm just that's not something I'd like have on my list for the rest of my life to do. Pigs but, maybe, you know. but not dogs. Yeah. <laughs> like along the way if I come across one. Yeah. I like I wouldn't just leave one in a well, but like I'm not gonna go out of my way to look for dogs yeah. in wells. I feel like and I'm not saying this is like an insult alert, but I feel like there's a part of you that never wants this adventure of ours to end. That as long as we give you the chance, you will just keep finding things for us to do because you don't want to be away from us. I don't think you're entirely wrong. I spent four years running away from an invention that was supposed to be the best thing a brilliant mind could make. 
few people came in. They didn't make it until the rest of them rescued me. And that changed a lot. And then we found the two of you, and I thought I had waited for a long time, but you guys had waited for hundreds or even more years. Yeah, so we I, were asleep, so like we didn't really notice. Yeah. We didn't know what we were missing. Yeah. Well, you did when you woke up. True. True, true. I don't know. The so, only yeah. thing I would have missed was right there with me, so. Aww. Oh, my Aww. aching heart. Oh, oh you too. Oh. <laughs> I can even look at him with those wings, though. I mean, really. I can't. I have a really hard time with it right now, man. <laughs> I know they say that, you know, love is more than just the outside appearance, but I don't know. It's freaking me out. I think those wings are boss. I, I'm, I'm a lot. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> If water just goes everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> I think they don't, you know, uh, they don't get wet though. The, you know, whatever it is about the your your celestial nature feathers, uh, you know, they don't get wetted by the water. So you know, they still look glorious even though they've been submerged. All right. Ooh. They're so awesome. The feathers don't get wet. The water gets feathers. <laughs> So that famous setting, uh, that famous uh, idiom, you know, off a of planetar's back. Yep. Like, well, <laughs> <laughs> now I want a rousing game so of, many times. I want a rousing game of duck, duck, cat. Mm. <laughs> How about it, Alark? Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> he can just fly. It's not really fair. So yeah, maybe I'm I'm not eager to go back to everything. That, I know it has to happen. You'll never have to go back. I mean, yeah. nothing will ever be the same. It's never going to be the way it was before for any of us. You've got a whole world out there, Lark. Heck, multiple worlds at this point. You Don't worry about the future. You'll be ready for it. And if you're not, I mean, that's never stopped us before. <laughs> All right. Let's go uh, soap a shapeshifter. All right, I think I agree. That sounds great. <clears throat> How are you going to do that? We got to find her. So, yeah. <laughs> we know she's in Gehenna, and that's about it, huh? Yep. I mean, hmm. I wonder that, um, if navigating Gehenna is similar to navigating, like, in the Nine Hells. But we were Wasn't there. That where we oh. fought uh, uh, Drakarix? No, um, Obelix, or yeah, was it the Obelix? No, it was, no, uh, no, no, no. It was, it was, it was. Yeah, no, it was. Drakarix was in the plane of Gehenna. Yeah, but uh, uh, I mean, so, that is an infinite plane. So, I mean, the gate you like open I was wondering if might have a sense of that from mm -hmm. the time that we were there. So, yeah, maybe. But you know, we didn't know where she was. Just. That she's there. Mm -hmm. um, that the the gate that you open, so we could grab Pishwish. We can do that in reverse, can't we? You can open a gate near her, and we'll just come out there. Uh, I think it only works on one at a time. Let me look. Uh, well, you could bring her though. Yeah, but if it opened the gate to where she was, couldn't we go through the gate? I mean, or do we have to right? Pull right. That's out? what I. That's what I thought. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. That, it might That's work a the complicated way. spell. I because yeah. to pull her, we'd have to wake her up, and I we you know want to avoid that if possible. I think. I think um, that once we go to Soper, she's going to wake up. Probably. Mm -hmm. There's probably no getting around that. Yeah, it requires it's for a you have to speak the a name of a specific creature. Like uh, they're, no, they're, you don't have to. Do oh, that. their true name. You, you can, if you want use the spell to draw someone through by saying their name. But you can also just open the portal at a place. You have to know where you want it to open, 
but mm. but you you have scryed gotcha. on her. That's how you saw her in her whirlwind form. So we know what we also she we also maybe for an easier solution because that's a very powerful spell. We have a tuning fork for that area. Well, for the plane anyway. Mm -hmm. if you know right. Where and we can describe and and hope for the best, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I did sort of see it. I scryed on her. Yeah. Uh, but I I don't know how that plane works. So like it might. Uh... Um. Anyway, Nira can know, make a religion check, and Cadence can make a. You're good at survival, right? I think so. Um. Yeah. Uh, I'm just Not trying terrible. to think which which skill would represent your knowledge of the different planes. Um, I would say probably survival. Okay, yeah. So you can make that, and Nira can make the religion check. Thank you. Uh, Eighteen. Okay. Um, you don't know a lot of you know specific detail. What you know about Gehenna is that. Whereas the abyss is where chaotic evil fiends uh, exist, demons and so on, and the nine hells are where lawful evil fiends exist, devils and so on. Gehenna is not really any of those. If anything, Gehenna is a plane that is primarily associated with, um, with greed and other sorts of those vices, like emotionally emotional vices um, and that uh, it is the place where uh, fiends known as Yugoloths come from um, and that you know jives with what you've understood as far as you know w you know uh, Jinxie's nature to some extent like you don't know exactly what she is but uh, it that is the sort of thing that exists in Ge Gehenna natively you know that it's a very chaotic, cruel landscape. Like it's not conducive to easy travel, but you don't really know about navigating. You, you would guess that if anything, it might be like the hells or the abyss in the sense of it's not fixed locations, but it's also, um, you, you don't know exactly how it works. We okay. Yeah, so. I'm going to try yeah. picking up a local guide if we got there. Oof. When you. No, she was just the essence at that time. Never mind. I was trying to think if there was anything specific to her that we could use Amethyst to locate object on. Mm. Uh, you would still need to be within a thousand feet. Yeah, a thousand spell. feet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nira, you believe that the gate could just take you right there. But that is a powerful spell. So if you wanted to use something short of that, um, you know that the there's some chance that you would be arriving further away and have some traveling to do there. And at least, you know, the time you spent there previously wasn't very, you know, hospitable. Right. And because we don't have... Um the magic mansion anymore that makes it a little trickier to move around well, we could we could get a coat and a tent that's not hard to get don't we have tents yeah man you got y'all got used to the swank man what'd you do before i got here <laughs> slept on the ground mostly yeah, there you go rain, no. there hey. were ends. a lot of rain a lot. i remember <laughs> i remember the rain Squatting in giant's houses. <laughs> Sleep under a wagon. So, I mean, I, I could do the gate spell, but yeah, it's like, that one's not a joke. And also, <laughs> also expensive, although not so much of an issue anymore, but. I say let's do it. Let's gate it. Let's not waste time. My vote for gate. Get, <laughs> I second. Get something like a, a strong, a heavy coat. Is the whole place like that place where Dracarx was? Cold and, and uh, icy? Uh, no, what you know is I think that... that was just... 
Hmm. Yeah, like it's it's all different. It, it's basically every kind of unpleasant landscape you can imagine. So like almost every possible way that the uh, environment could be um, cruel and forbidding, there is a place that's like that. So it could be anything. Yeah, it could be anything. It like could be a desert. Be nice, anything that's nice. Could be a swamp. Could be a hailstorm. Could <laughs> be like a really barren mountaintop with a lot of wind. Could be, let's see, some sort of dank cave, right? That's a possibility. So we should each pack a couple different costume, not costumes, <laughs> outfits. <laughs> costumes for every possible. No. Sounds like Dragon Con. I think we should just go. Right. So we should just go shopping. Is that what you're saying? We need to go shopping. I'm saying yeah, we should just, we go. just go and find out. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah. on. There's no, there's too many variables. We can always come back if we find ourselves in trouble. Yeah, we yeah, can I mean, always tuck our tails between our legs and run away again. That's fine. No one's saying that's not an option. What so, do you mean again? So it's one, a <laughs> one problem. One problem with this plan is that I do not have the gate spell prepared. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh. Well, what's well, that going to take? We can go and take a nap. Takes, I mean, a long, getting a long rest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I can do that if you know. Want I mean, to can we? Too bad. It. Time still moves. Oh wait. <laughs> can we plane shift right now? So that yeah, we're not, you that, know. Are, yeah. How how does that work? Like because of where we are. Um, you could go? you could do plane shift. I mean, technically, where you are is in the spirit realm, aka ethereal plane, which mm. is more tied to the prime material plane than most of the others are, but the it wouldn't if impact the plane shift spell. Okay. So I guess we could just go then, but yeah, um, yeah wouldn't have to uh, prepare that spell if you guys want to just sure. go. It's, it's going to take a minute, but yeah. Sure. <laughs> we can yeah. do that. All right. So, okay. Let me move some stuff around. <laughs> <laughs> so this is plane shift and you're planning to visualize what you saw in the scrying. Is that correct? Okay. So we're doing, we're doing plane shift and not like, I thought I that's thought what we were you were just saying. You, guys, you tell rest. me what you guys want to do. Yeah. Let's do plane shift. We'll take a moment okay. so you can do it properly. I'll finish that checkers game with amethyst that we started earlier. It'll be fine. So we plane shift back to the tree. We're plane shifting back to the tree. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I thought we were plane shifting to Jinxie. What are we no, doing? No, because here? we don't like we don't know what the environment there is and if she's going to prepare the gate spell and she needs to rest in order to do that, we need to rest somewhere safely. All right. All right. Well, let's just do it so we can do it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, do they have like wards up? Do we have to like actual, actually leave the spa no, area? No, you're, you're 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 good. Okay, all right. So I guess uh, we we left all our stuff outside, so we have to go out anyway. Yeah, but, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to just leave all that behind. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> I, My loaded I, I thought for a second all you that. were no going to plane shift right there from the tub, and I was going <laughs> to. I, I, no. I would not have I would not have done that to you because it would not have made any sense for your characters to not remember that you're not <laughs> you don't have all your stuff. Yeah, especially also, you're wearing given, a you know how suit, long so. we were arguing about it. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No. Okay, but yeah. So out of the tub, go clean up, dry mm -hmm. off, collect stuff, and then I will plane shift us back to the tree. Okay, you do that. It's pretty much how you left it because time has stopped. <laughs> Yay! Mm -hmm. No shenanigans. So, uh, you know, obviously you're you're there. Uh, the the city and the tree are under the 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 desert sky rather than the silvery mists of the astral sea. And you are able to uh, get your long rest wherever you feel like you would want to do that. And we can go ahead and just. 
advance time to the the next day if you'd like. Mm -hmm. okay. Cool. You select from your treasure hall the requisite diamond for the gate spell. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a big one. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. We gonna do this, guys? Yep. We're so gonna do it. Yeah. Okay. So I am going to use the gate spell to uh, land us right wherever Jinxie is. Mm -hmm. So you visualize what you had previously seen through your scrying, which was mm -hmm. a harsh uh, mountainous landscape, sort of a, almost like a, a rocky crater. Uh, and that uh, in the center of it, this, this whirlwind uh, gradually uh, accumulating material. And as you all poof through and plane shift, you suddenly find yourself um, in a slightly different character of place uh, because it makes sense retroactively that that strange crater might have actually been the caldera of a volcano. So oh. It is not just lava, but there is lava around. You're not standing in it, but there is some around. Um, but looming above you, frozen, is this enormous towering over you whirlwind that is crackling with uh, electric force and other chaotic energies. Um, and if you're not entirely mistaken, there's just a general impression of some eyes glaring <laughs> out from the whirlwind. And with that, let me see if I can go ahead and bring you over to the map. That's amazing. You've got a map for this already. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. We've really failed in our chaotic All right. duty. All right. And so there are all of you down there Ooh. in the lower right corner. Uh, on I like this map. I like the whirlwind. Thank you. It's nice. Uh, Suddenly the episode title makes sense. Damn it. So, uh, yes, you arrive and it is extremely hot. Um, you are not like taking damage just from standing there, but you get the impression that lava hot and uh, the whirlwind towers above you, but everything is still time stopped as, as, as is the nature of the universe at the moment. So, uh, Ket, you want to, I don't fly over there and drop how does this work do we just like drop the soap on her or what well how um well i mean we have to tag her with it so theoretically if we toss it into the whirlwind of herself it is magic soap it is possible that it will disseminate into her being and all's well that ends well at that same time I don't think this soap has ever been used on a whirlwind before, so that may not work. The only way for sure would be to somehow coalesce her into some sort of physical state and then wash her with it. But we can try just tossing it in there and see what happens. Do we have to use the entire bar of soap? Or can no, we, we can probably break it, I guess. It. We got a lot. We got a whole block here. Yeah. What if we put it in a bucket with some water and then just dump the water on her and then she would be completely covered? I mean, that sounds great. Any water around here? <laughs> oh, good point. Good point. <laughs> did not yeah, bring I any thought water. of it. I might have been able to. I, make I, some, I, I did not prepare that. Oh, wait, that's not one of my, like, I think control <clears throat> or not create or destroy is not one of my gimmies, but yeah. Just, I think, I think as a cleric, you can, you do can take control water, but I don't think you have it by default. <clears throat> I, I have control water, but I don't have create or destroy water, I don't think. Uh, I uh, might have access to it, but I don't have it equipped. Yeah. 
I wasn't yeah. really thinking of that being a requirement. Maybe Amethyst <laughs> has it. I mean, we can take a day if it's really necessary. Do we need to take another day, Alara? Come on. What's another day when time is? We stopped? could all just like the whole time we're walking, just spit into a bucket over and over and over again, and do it that way. I think that'll <laughs> take more than a day. So all of you right now are about sixty feet away from from this whirlwind, and uh, it's hard to see much through the you know the funnel cloud and the other crackling electricity. I mean, you could try going in for a closer look, or um, if you wanted to try to glean any additional useful details. Hey, uh, Ket, go get, take a closer look. I mean, I can also fly. So <coughs> I'm, like, yeah, but, yeah, but he's the planet. Yeah, I'll go look. I'm good yeah, with the I'm heat. Like, I'll go look. Oh, that's true. I'm not, I'm I mean, not I fireproof, survive so. It, <laughs> okay. I'm not keen on it. I may look buff, but man, that fire oh, yeah. still burns. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, walk right up over to it. Okay. So, uh, our uh, autarchy is um, now. Here's the thing: actual lava is not like water. You don't like splash into it and are submerged because it's much denser than that. In fact, you wouldn't mm -hmm. even really sink. You would kind of deform into it, though. But immune to fire damage, Otterkey, uh, you find it a bit like walking through thick mud. Um, just <clears throat> tingly, He's a two-year-old in a rainy day. <laughs> um, is is only Archie going over, or is anyone else? Uh, after Archie goes, I'm teleporting over next to him. Okay. Poof. Poof. All right. So you're. How close are you getting? I'm following your lead, Clyde. <laughs> uh, things look good, so I'm going to just walk up. All right. Walk all the way up to the, the maelstrom. Okay. Feel free to make an investigation check. Don't mind if I do. You can uh, Either one of you can do it with advantage, or you can each roll your own. Oh, yeah. Why don't you deal with it, Bianch? All right. Let's see. Come on. Of course, I would have closed my character sheet. All right. So that's a 15. Okay. Oh, but with advantage, let me see. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a 20. That's better. Okay. Yeah, so what you can see, especially given your ability to, you know, move around and examine from different angles, is that there does seem to be, at the center of this uh, cyclone, there does seem to be some sort of a central solid core of material. And it looks, based on what uh, Nira had described in her scrying when everything was in motion, you suspect that part of what's happening here is that um, the chaotic energy that represents Jinxie's essence is sort of rebuilding a physical form. Mm -hmm. So there is a solid core in there, but you also suspect that right now, frozen in time, if you were to just like drop the soap down onto it, it would just bonk off and fall to the ground because it's... You know, like to have the what you have all discovered in, in this is that anything you're doing that's going to have an effect on something does tend to unfreeze it. Right. So it's it's kind of an either or you. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, we we, we knew that we were going to have to unfreeze her. To do this, like that's just right. Likely, um, I think um, Archie make. Hmm. Trying to think. Make uh. You you're not proficient in um. Oh, okay. I will let you make a, a religion check with advantage, mm -hmm. and okay. this is specifically because of your past studies of fiends. Cool. Eleven. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that what you know is that is mostly just what you've talked about already, which is to say fiends like demons and devils are the ones most people talk about, 
but uh, Ugoloths and others such that would be native to Gehenna are similar in the sense that uh, the only way that they are ever destroyed permanently is if they are destroyed on their home plane. And if they are destroyed anywhere else, they essentially regenerate back on their home plane. And so that does seem to be what's happening here, but the detailed specifics of the how that works and, and, and all of that is a little bit less clear. Do mm -hmm. I spot that um, from where I am, do I see that little like ritual looking area over there? Looks like um, an altar, porches. Is that there or is that just maps? Stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's there, but uh, yeah, so I mean, you can go over to it if you want. Yeah, I'll, I'll fly over there and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll check it out. Okay. See if I can. All right. Make a, uh, make an investigation check. That's a 13, so not great. Okay. Yeah, I think that you can tell from it that it does seem to be describing some kind of a ritual, but it's mostly incomprehensible and you're not really able to, you're not even sure if it describes what's happening up there or if it's something else. Is, so is there written stuff here or is it just well you know, there's all sorts of uh like like runes and symbols and everything that seem to be describing something like arcane and ritual like like it's it's describing some sort of a magic ritual but it's a lit a little bit like if you were to read a wizard's spell book like mm. you you understand that it's describing a spell but you're not really able to make sense of the what the individual symbols mean. Mm. All right, what if, I'm talking to Archie here, what if we did it, let's go back to that bucket of water idea. What if we had one, we got it all soapy, and then we, we unfroze, and we unfroze Jinxie, and then just, just hit the core with the water. I think I could make that shot. Does that sound reasonable? Well, I mean, if we have a freezer, she's probably going to be moving. So if we throw water yeah, on her, that water really can go shot. everywhere. Yeah, but the water will go everywhere and get all over her. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it could be good. Yeah. Yeah, let's try it. You want to try it? I do. I mean, we got a lot of soap. If it doesn't work, we'll just yeah. back off and do it again. <laughs> I, I mean, it it sounds right. I mean, distributed. And... Mm -hmm. All right. We'll just use like a quarter of the soap. We'll use a okay. quarter of the soap. We'll give it a shot. Okay. Again, do we have water? Does it, gonna, what about amethyst? I, I've got gut powers. I'm going to conjure a bucket of water. Form of a bucket of water. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. That works. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I just will, however, right out of my sleeve. give... Uh, let's see. I will give um, whoever has in intelligence score of eighteen or up. Do, is that anyone? I think I think Nira has like a circlet or something. No. Uh, no, mine's only at seventeen. So okay. I'm dumb. So no. Mm, not super, super dumb. dumb. Okay. <laughs> I, dumb five. I okay. How about this? I will let everybody make an intelligence check. Okay. About whether this cockamamie idea is gonna well, work. whether I let you know a, a potential hazard or not. <laughs> Twelve. Thirteen. Oh, I rolled a natural twenty. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, Nira, I think as you watch, uh, Mugen actually conjures this uh, bucket of water, and everyone seems to be proceeding with the plan. And it briefly occurs to you. How are you going to get the wa the water all soapy without getting it on yourself and therefore also oh. being tagged with the soap? <laughs> <laughs> mm. I do have a third hand. Yeah. Yeah, I, you could use mage hand. Your spectral hand thing. Oh, I got mage hand too. Yeah, you guys so, could do uh, double mage hand. I will holler out my observation. <laughs> and I will definitely smack myself in the forehead. It's like, right! Ah. Oh. 
Well, see, okay. this is that's what the dilemma I had as a DM was like, do I just let them do that and not realize like that that's just going to ruin the whole plan? No, <laughs> no, I have to give you a shot at least. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, so I'm going to mage hand getting the water all soapy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think we should back off and let the mage hands throw the bucket too. I'm not as dexterous with the mage hand as I am with my own hands. But what if you get it on? Unless I am. How does uh, mage... The mage hand is not strong enough to throw a bucket of water. All right. Mm. It can only lift five pounds. Damn it. All right. All right. So I have a bucket of soapy water that I've been mage handing. Um, um, could could I, in theory, use a gust of wind to blow the soapy water at the... <laughs> couldn't you use control world? water? <laughs> oh, yeah, I yeah. could do that too. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably be better. You mentioned the spell like five times. It's almost like yeah. it's made for controlling. Yeah. Right. Like, if we had someone who knew how to control water, <laughs> water out of the bucket, I wouldn't have to throw it. Oh. All right, so where is everybody you know standing as you're, as you're making control water? This? Anyone in the team? I, I have control water, yes. <laughs> okay, where where are all of you? Have you been making up this bucket of water? Have you, like, where on the map is everybody? I'm in the same spot I've always been. Like, okay. that's fine. All right, so is anyone else, like, up there? Or, like... Yeah, I'll stay there to help. I mean... Okay. Yeah, I'll go up there so I can, oh, no. I can talk without yelling across sure. this a little bit. So, uh, those of you who can't fly and are not immune to fire damage how are you crossing the lava <laughs> i'm not hmm i will miss the step across it poof are there portions that are jumpable like alaric how how far can you jump <laughs> i mean it looks about at least I mean, seven or eight feet it. wide at least you could get your rock friend to carry you oh that would, that would hurt him just as much as it might hurt me he's mm -hmm. rock He'd be fine. Still burns. Yeah. No, rock okay doesn't burn. That's the thing no. about rock. It doesn't burn. Well, but I mean, the thing is that lava is by definition hot enough to melt rock. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good point. You made a good point there. <laughs> hmm. so, I mean, you could carry him over, Nira or Ket. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a spell, which is I'm gonna make a lark fly, and just drag him over here. I've done that before. All right. No, not the cloud thing again. Yeah, the cloud thing again. You love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cat right, uh, I'll, I'll obviously can fly. In fact, actually, I should have his other token on there. Let me get that. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, get the right scale. All right. Yep. All right. So everybody's over there. Um, here's the thing. Um, yeah, you know what? It's fine. Amethyst is there, too. <laughs> I, well, I was just going to briefly say, like, maybe it's simpler to just say that she stayed behind. But I don't I don't feel like coming up with a plot reason for that. I don't know that she would have let you guys go off. She doesn't have something <laughs> specific. Else Not to fight enough. Jinxie. Yeah. She would never leave us for that. But she is a bear. I can see her right now. She's a panda. Oh, well. yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I can. Uh... I I think I have my. I have a panda token. Oops, that's uh, me. There we go. Amethyst yeah. is a panda. panda. That's what she does when she doesn't want to deal with our shenanigans. She turns into a panda. Mm -hmm. I feel like I thought that I had a uh, had a I had a colored panda f version of her. No, that was she had I had um, the other ones that she did for the Dracarix fight, but never mind. Anyway, here's she's a panda. There she is. See. <laughs> All right. Clearly. Mm -hmm. If this goes south, don't worry. I'll turn into a cave bear, and we'll be bears together, Amethyst. <laughs> <laughs> You already had your chance back at the spa to have bear asses. I could be a bear if I want to. That's my. <laughs> I can anytime. Mm -mm -mm. Don't challenge me, Alaric. I'll turn into a bear right now. I'm I think kind of Amethyst kind of turns time. around and just kind of like butt bumps you. 
<laughs> Maybe we should spread out a bit just in case this goes. Well, I think once we yeah, go to do it, gonna... we're going to move back. Yeah. I was going to take the bucket because this has a range of 300 feet. So I was going to kind of move towards the edges of further back towards the edge of the lava there. <laughs> little further away mm -hmm. not that i think it will help but <laughs> well we have to but we have to interact with it but it has to wake up well does I it i mean Pinksy is not completely irrational i'm sure if we said hey it's either this or my friends try to kill you you know i <laughs> i, I hmm. feel like she would she would be like Okay, maybe that's a good deal. Because you know, she knows us. She doesn't like to fight. You're sticking up for her way too much. Are you Jinxie? <laughs> Literally right here. <laughs> Literally right in front of you. How do I know that's not Nira? That Jinxie put Nira in that thing? It I don't know. It does look like I mean, a storm full of lightning and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it looks just like Nira. Look. I hate to point out that Nirakina brought us here. <laughs> How do you <laughs> hate to do <bring> that? <laughs> we don't that know anything in her favor. Don't hate to point that out. <laughs> A lot of hates everything. It's okay. I guess so. Oh, I hate to back there. up my girlfriend. So we're going to do this, guys. <laughs> if you're going to spread out, because once this hits her, that's it. She's going to wake up. Okay, yeah, I I'm know. Just... I'm Places missing stepping please. back to the lava, yeah. back over to um, that little, little pool. Listen, listen. Yeah, I guess Infinity. maybe we should step outside of the actual sigil because yeah, that, that's probably yeah. might be yeah. contained yeah. there, right? Yeah, well, everyone, the other tell thing me is where you want to be. Right the outside the sigil. Yeah. Okay. Be yeah, at least outside the blast yeah, zone, yeah. the pillar, yeah. the splash yeah. zone, maybe. Yeah, that's yeah. why I moved all the way over to the edge. Okay. So, um. Yeah. Let's 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 get a little ways. What, like still in mean, the central area? Yeah, off no? the dais. Off the dais. Okay. Off yeah. The dais. Like that. yeah, by that rock, just in case we need to hide or something. Sure. All right. Are, cool. are those um, pillars? Uh, they, they are, but they're only like three feet tall. So Mugen could hide behind one, but probably only. Ha <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. A lark I mean, might I be good. So. I could crouch, though. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to move off to the far uh, left. Okay. Like, go over here? Yeah. I don't right. I don't want to hit anybody by accident with the water. So, well, I'm controlling it. But I'll once she wakes to... up, I don't know if it'll spin. Yeah, be That's out of why the splash I'm... zone. Yeah. I move back to the other side of the lava. Mm -hmm. Just in case. You do because think we don't it's, know. it's highly likely, given that it is a whirlwind, that if it starts to spin with a bunch of water on it, some of that water might go everywhere. I pull out an umbrella out of my sleeve. I'm going to go straight up. All right. Um, Let's see if I... Uh, so I will put you here with a little indicator. How high are you going? Um, well, I mean, this has a range of 300 feet, so, like, <laughs> I could technically be that high, but why? <clears throat> um, so I don't, I don't know, say uh, 50 feet above okay. this and kind of a little bit to the side so I can, yeah. All right. So, okay. yeah, I've got a little 50 indicator here to for your right. height. Um, Kat? Uh, I'm going to be, hold on, let me check my, my speed here. I'm I going think, to. Uh, oh, sorry, go, go ahead. No, no, no. Um, I situate myself about 40 feet above where I am. So I'm going to stay there, but I'm going to be like 40 feet in the air. All right. Uh, worth noting that that is about how tall this whirlwind is. Like on okay. The ground. So you, you would be about level with the top of it. Okay. All right. What about you, Araki? I had imagined being uh, uh, back by Mugen. Actually, I'd probably be just in front of the pillar, north of the pillar. Like that? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I got to crouch down behind the pillar. Okay. Um, Amethyst uh, briefly poofed into a bird and then poofed back into a panda. 
<laughs> on the other side of the lava. All right. All right. Are we good? Right Everybody on. where they want to be? Yeah. I got my I... umbrella. <laughs> I am going to cast Control Water and uh, direct the soapy water in the bucket to the, uh, I guess, to the solid mass that's kind of in the center there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So as uh, so, he, tell me, like, paint the visual picture of how it looks that you're moving the water there. Are you just like, are you doing it like you would just like tossing a whole bucket of water on somebody, or are you doing like a gentle stream of a little bit at a time? How how are, are you, you not pressuring it? It would yeah. look like kind kind of like a tentacle like it would start to hit the mic it would start to kind of spin in the bucket and like swirl upward mm -hmm. and then sort of water bending arch downward yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> um all right good so uh as you begin doing that with this uh sudsy water taking care not to uh get it on yourself you uh, direct the stream down there and as it begins to pour over this sort of central uh, you know it pours past these crackling bolts of strange lightning and these wisps of dust and other material that had been picked up by the winds when it was moving uh, begins to pour over that central core and then as it does you see the forces of this whirlwind beginning to spin up. The crackling light uh, begins to move as well. And it happens much faster than perhaps you are used to with other things just because you realize how quickly this is all moving when it's at full speed. So seeing it spin up seems to happen very quickly but all of us you know before long you really can't see down into the center at all because the whirlwind is moving and uh, we're not going to do proper initiative for this because it's not really turns necessarily. But what I do need uh, to have happen first is that everyone except Cadence and Amethyst need to make a strength saving throw for me first as the winds <clears throat> around you. Sixteen. Twenty-four. Twenty. Twenty-six. Seventeen. All right. Um, so that... Ruben gets a plus four being next to me. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you roll yours, um, Mugen? I, I don't oh, think I heard. Sorry, it. you muted. I got ten. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, is so that with a plus? Like okay. So fourteen. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, uh, Mugen, you are sort of scooped up by the wind and dragged 10 feet forward along the ground towards sure. the cyclone. Sure. I'm probably losing my umbrella, too. Um, <laughs> Lisa goes, spoing yeah. inside. I, I would think so, yeah, probably. And it's all on the whirlwind now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so as you are dragged across this volcanic sort of glassy ground you're going to take uh 19 slashing damage okay. as, as the winds sort of just batter you against the ground but dragging you along um otterkey you are able to hold yourself in place um nira you had what 16 16 yes you are also dragged uh 10 feet closer but you are um in in the air so you don't uh you are pulled like towards the cyclone but you're obviously not on the ground so there's no no damage from that um, but you are now only 45 feet um above and that's pretty close to the center there um what yeah. was your strength saving throw alaric uh 17. okay um i'll actually let you roll with advantage because you're you're kind of behind the pillar so you can kind mm -hmm. of brace against that 25. okay yeah you're good then uh, and then yours was high too, I believe, right, Kat? 
Yeah, mine was 24. Yeah, you're so you're good. Your your powerful planetar wings are able to hold you in place against these battering winds. Um, but now also what happens is that the electrical energy begins to crackle out from it. And um, I need a dexterity saving throw from Nira and Ket and Mugen and Archie. And let's see. And Alaric is just out of range. 20, not natural. Okay. 23. 30. Ooh. 22. Look at all these dexterous fellows and it's uh, what i do it's yes. my main stat <laughs> um i save that's what i do yeah yeah uh, <laughs> we're kind of the opposite of each other i have a glass jaw but i can bounce around yeah so uh all of you make the save which means you only take half of the 39 lightning damage that um, lashes out, but of course Nira immune to lightning damage, so that you know doesn't take any damage. But uh, the the bolts of lightning are crackling out, um, but and you get the, the feeling look like as you all sort of see it is that it's not only hitting you, but you see it like arcing uh, like off of you and hitting other things too, like and so you get the impression that like it this this lightning could could chain. But as it was, you're all close enough to get hit. Anyway, that is except for Amethyst and Cadence who retreated to a safe distance. How much um, was that? Uh, oh, so you would be taking 39. 19. So 39 was the full damage, but you saw, all saved. So 19. Uh, like, yeah, 19 lightning damage. Um, and the storm is now rotating so quickly that... Um, you can't really see that central core anymore, except in occasional silhouette as lightning gonna, sort of crackles I, behind it. Hmm? I can use Uncanny Dodge for this, though, right? Yeah, you can use it for the being dragged along the ground for the lightning, but not both. All right, well, I already did the damage for the lightning, so we'll do it for the dragging along the ground. All right. I mean, we'll do it for the... It doesn't really matter. It's the same... Anyway, right? Well, it was the, uh, coincidentally, it was the same number. Yeah, so. Yeah, so one of those is what? Um, uh, one eight? of them would be uh, nine. Nine, nine instead of 19. Yeah. Ah, all right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So we'll just do the nine. All right. So um, as, as it stands right now, this storm is uh, continuing to whirl around. There is a sense of... Uh, Let's let's see. Let's have all of you make uh, perception checks. Uh, the, only those of you close in like this. Thirty. Eighteen. Surprisingly perceptive. Oh. Yeah, only twenty-three for me. <laughs> but that was a thirty from Nira. Yes. So you get just the 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 hint of these these eyes that seem to glare out from the storm. Um, but whereas before they, like, if you could get any sort of an emotional context from them, it was maybe concentration, but now it seems to be surprise, but not necessarily like an angry surprise. It's not like shocked and horrified. It's more just like that sort of, you know, expression. But uh, the storm is definitely continuing to um, whirl around, and uh, you all get the feeling that that wind and lightning is going to keep happening unless you're doing something about it. We, we can well, get out of here. I suggest we go. Um, I'm going to head. Did we do it? Did we do it? Well, it's we didn't there. establish, but we did have, there was a stones that we were all having that would light oh, up. Yeah. So I'm going to pull out one of those stones and see if it lights up in proximity. Um, it does. It does? Yep. Yeah, I hold, I hold it up and show it to the others rather than trying to shout over a storm. Good enough for me. All right. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to use the uh, cape and I'm going to blip over to where uh, Cadence and... I think before you do that, um, well, you know what? I think it's fine. Alaric, by virtue of taking his action to do that, is going to be subject to one more round of the wind and lightning. Okay. Strength was it first? 
Uh, uh, that is 27. All right. Yeah. So you were able to hold yourself uh, in place there. And then uh, dexterity. No, oh, that was a natural 20. Only a 12 in total. Oh, well, I think you're going to take all 33 of that lightning damage. I so will use my reaction to cunning. Uh, what was it? My, not my cunning action. The same thing that... Uh, Uncanny dodge. Uncanny, Uncanny, Uncanny dodge. dodge. It's been so long since I've used it. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so uh, Nira uses the cape to poof back out over to where uh, Cadence and Amethyst Cadence are. Cadence and Amethyst are, yeah. Yeah. You definitely still feel the wind over there, but it's not so strong that it can pull you off your feet or anything like that. How much uh, damage was that? 33. Okay. Uh, all right. What about uh, <clears throat> Ket, Mugen, yeah, and Otterkey? I'll Otterkey will jog down. Jog back over. All right. <laughs> I think because you are not traveling instantly, you do still uh, need to make the strength saving throw first for the wind. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 15. Uh, you attempt to move <laughs> away, but find yourself lifted Ooh. off your feet, dragged uh, 15 feet closer to the cyclone, and you're going to take... Um, Uh, 21 slashing damage as you are dragged along the ground. And then a dexterity saving throw for you. Disadvantage because you're prone. <laughs> uh, what is my dex? Uh, 17. Okay. Whoops. Uh, that's a failure. So you take 49 lightning damage. Ooh. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Forty-nine, you... and um, if I don't know if my shield would still be considered active uh, if I fell like that, but as a reaction, normally I can take half of it. Yeah, I mean the magical of effect of it that you you can still do that. Sweet. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, what about Mugen? What are you doing? I'm gonna use my cloak to poof right in front of Otterkey so that he can use my cloak to uh, hop through a portal. Okay. And go the other side. All right, so you, let's see, you do... do I basically you... poof and hold it open. Like that's... Okay, I'm, that's I'm just saying, so I think, I don't think you can poof there, but you could run up there mm. and then open it. All right. Because yeah, if you open it where you are to go 10 feet, then that's where the other, Right, yeah, and sure is, right so but you can essentially allow yourself to like go forward and have the portal open there and I'm so doing. you are holding it open um to where otter key will be able to move through it next time but i'm going to need you to make those saving throws in order to be there in the meantime so right. first strength you do get the bonus from um uh archie uh although you're closer to the cyclone now so the wind is even stronger Sure. Um, what was that bo Archie bonus? Four. Plus four. Four. All right. So that's 13. Okay. Um, yeah. You are, let's see. Uh, Otterkey, make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 12. <laughs> Okay, I was going to give you an opportunity to try to grab Mugen grab as him. he's lifted <laughs> oh, into no. the air being pulled towards this uh, cyclone. Um, you are off the ground, Mugen. Um, <laughs> and uh, dexterity saving throw? Sure. Oh, oh no. That's only 15. Uh, 52 lightning damage. Fair enough. But you can use your... Um... My uncanny dodge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that would be 26. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Ket, how about you? Um... Mugen looks it, like in dire trouble right now. He is literally being sucked up into the tornado. 
Where is Mugen? He's oh, right, right there, there, right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. But he's okay. literally been lifted off the ground and beginning to like spin in, up into the cyclone. Okay. Well, I am strong boy. I will attempt to fly over. Mm -hmm. Use my action to grab hold of him. And uh, hold on, my flying speed is 120 feet. That's pretty fast. Yeah, so I oh that's fine. So I'm gonna grab and then and then fly away from the tornado. All right. Um, like sixty feet. Okay, so make a strength saving throw. By the time you are up to where Mugen is, you are actually within Archie's aura, so you will get that benefit. Okay, strength saving throw. Yeah. Right. Uh, ooh, that's 16, 7, 8, 9, 20, 22, 23, 24, 26. So 27 with nice. Archie's benefit, yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. You are able to swoop in, intercept Mugen as he is being sucked up into the cyclone and then fly away with him in tow. I hear this dramatic hero music, like trumpets, like as he does that. Like... <laughs> <laughs> hey, little buddy! <laughs> The Flight of the Valkyries. I, I'm suddenly reminded of one of my favorite all-time movie music cues ever, which is from the first Mission Impossible movie, where it's just when the uh, the the train has been going along and the helicopter's following, and then uh, you know the helicopter ends up cabled to the train and has to follow it into the tunnel, and then Tom Cruise jumps from the train onto the helicopter. And that's when the classic Mission Impossible theme kicks in. And it's like, da 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 dum 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 It's great. Anyway. <laughs> um, Alaric and Otterkey. What are you doing? Uh, okay, so he's safe. Yeah. And I realize that I can Misty Step. Mm -hmm. So I'll misty step towards away from the. Yeah. So you can misty step thirty feet. Do, 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 craziness. Get that far, yeah. <clears throat> and run the rest of the way. Yeah. Once you're that far away, the wind is more manageable. You don't have to make another saving throw. Um, how about you, uh, Alaric? Time to get experiment. Okay. No one close enough to help anymore. <laughs> yeah. Is, Time how for experiment. How long does fly last? Uh, it it would have worn little... off. It's just a minute. I think. Am I right? What? Well, I don't remember. Mugen. Um, hang on. I can find it. Um, it might be like... I assume the cloud went away because yeah, I was trying to crouch down. Because that was before you were making all the soapy water and doing all that planning and everything. It's 10 minutes, but I'm pretty sure it would have worn off by now. All right. Seeing the lava there, that's not my friend. Mm -hmm. um, however, I will uh, step boldly up to it, strike my foot down on the ground, utter the uh, the name of Rushama and cast Thunder Wave as I hope to wash the lava out of my way. Okay. And quickly run after it. To basically like shockwave like a, a, a path? Mm-hmm. Uh, it moves things 15 feet out of the way. So. Yeah, gosh. Or sorry, 10, uh, you know 10 what? feet away. How about this? Uh, I suggest that it does not actually blast this river of lava literally out of position. But what it does is it's this sudden compression of air blowing over it that briefly causes a cooled crust over the top of it that you can run along. How I'll run that? across that then. Yeah. Uh, make a strength saving throw, though, because you're, you're trying to fight the wind as you move. Natural one. Well, uh, with advantage, because you're still, you got the, you're sort of, uh, you've got that pillar to push off of. Would have been funny if it was a pair of natural ones, but no, the second one was a 27. There you go. So you managed to get over this way, but you get far enough away that the wind is not uh, currently sucking you up. Um, but you all sort of having now gotten uh, just far enough away that you are not in immediate danger, see this whirlwind kind of. Um, moving around inside the circle, but it doesn't ever leave the circle. And it seems to be moving around in, in a sort of agitated way, if you can interpret body language from a cyclone. But there's a lot of uh, chaotic, uh, stormy energy from it. 
Um, and <laughs> the eyes, uh, if anything, look like they're smiling. <clears> hmm. <throat> Ominous. Nice to see you again. It won't kill you. Sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Why do you want to be her best friend so bad? She's the worst. Not that. I, I oh. just rewatched Mean Girls recently. And so it's like, why are you so obsessed with me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you love Zoreth at all. I think it was her all along. <laughs> Your secret is out. So I think at this point, um, although Alaric has kind of gotten himself off on a separate little lava island, um, I think that you are all able to now, from a safe distance, uh, f fetch him back uh, to the rest Free of you. Group. And, and it would seem that you are far enough away that uh, this whirlwind of chaotic energy uh, that is, would appear to be Jinxie, is unable to uh, follow. Yay. I think it Can worked. Get out of here? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Unless we've got other business to be here. I don't see why we would stay any longer. Mm -hmm. Well, let's hope it sticks. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so I go guess to back I will... to our, our tree base. Yeah. yeah. Plane shift us back to home base. All right. You all gather around, and as Nira's uh, plane shift spell takes form, you are suddenly granted the reprieve of non superheated air and find yourselves back mm. in the now familiar Emirate Arboris. All right. So I want to dig out one of those stones and look at it. <laughs> It is no Do we have it on <laughs> us? Is it still glowing? <laughs> yeah. It is no longer glowing. Ah, Maybe that's... we can make like necklaces or something. Wait, is that? No, yeah, that's a good sign, right? Yeah, yeah. You so do we still want... have three quarters of that bar of soap, so theoretically you could use it for other things, although you don't know if that's actually helpful because it would just confuse the signal of the stone. Yeah, yeah. But in well, case we never need know. it again. Yeah, you never know. We might have somebody well, else any, that we don't want coming near us. And any other entity that has been tagged with this soap at any time is going to, you know, oh, set it off as well. Hmm. Yeah. And should this ever happen again, should Jinxie die once more and be reformed, we're probably going to have to reapply the soap, too. Hmm. Yeah, but how would we know? Probably because we've killed no, her. we wouldn't. Interesting. Not a foolproof plan. That's not a foolproof plan. No, but Why it makes Nira happy. It was a kinder no. one. I'll sleep a little better at night. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know Lard if Jinxie's that. necessarily worried about it. I think she was excited. She was like, "You guys came to get me." Uh any anyone who wants to can make an insight roll with disadvantage. Hell yeah! Just because you're trying to gain insight oh from goodness. just eyes peeking out of a lightning whirlwind. Twenty two. Oh wait. So natural one. She clearly was yeah. not happy to see us. Six. <laughs> Got a twenty two with Chris. disadvantage. Cadence. Yeah, I wrote a I wrote a twelve and a seventeen. Nice. And my insight's plus ten. Yeah, mine was kind of similar. So, um, I think that the best you can tell, Cadence, is <laughs> she was just happy to see you. <laughs> that makes me feel kind of guilty now, because I really want to <laughs> kill her. I don't think she was happy to see me. Probably just near. Definitely not a large. <laughs> I don't know what you intend to do with your stones, but it won't be carrying it with me. I'll be leaving it with my parents. They're the ones that are really in danger for her. If she comes after me, well, I'll learn to tell the difference, I suppose. I mean, I got more than you need an extra stone. I got stones. <laughs> Lugan's got like a whole sack full. Yeah, yeah. Here. <laughs> <laughs> 
give this one to your mom and yeah. this one to your dad. You want to we'll put one around a pet collar? What do you need? I assume we have one each. Oh, yeah, I got more. I gave you guys one each, but yeah, I got more. You, you want need a stone? I can get you a stone. Yeah, stones are no. I can get stones you stones. the easy part. <laughs> I can get you like five stones right now. Like that. Then we'll probably want to put some around the estate just to make sure. Yeah. How many you need? A large, like building a whole castle out of them over there. You can't build a whole castle out of them. <laughs> I know you love to build a wall, um, but uh, walls won't keep her out. So mm -hmm. that's done. Nope. And all we have to do is fight a demon and convince a lark to be happy, and we're done, right? Pretty much. <laughs> Sounds about right. Mm. Do we want to check in on Andrew? Who? She was with us for a while. I yeah, we wanted we... to de deliver some diamonds. I thought we did check on her. I mean, you scried we on looked her. looked on her. Yeah. yeah. But we were going to give her some things to make her life easier. Oh, okay. There's also that uh, hag running around, too. Yeah. Do we know anything about her, though? No. Um, I mean, we could just put soap on her. I mean, really, all you know is that she was <laughs> she was in the iron flask when you received it. <clears throat> I mean, like, if we let our friend in there go, are we going to chase him down and kill him? We just put him back on the plane. He was just doing his job, really. I mean, like, he's not he's not like feral. He follows orders is the thing. We don't know if she was feral <clears throat> or not. Who knows how long exactly. she was in yeah. that class? I mean, that's the one yeah. that concerns me. <laughs> I don't know if we could even find out who she was. I um, mean, yeah, if anything, I that hag her, would be grateful. Since I met her, I can use a crystal ball. And since, well, we let her go on this plane, so no reason to think she left. But maybe, I don't know, we'll find out. So I'm going to use the crystal ball to scry on this hag. Okay. <laughs> I don't know her name, but I know exactly what she looks like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Met her. I'm trying to remember, just I'm going to double check the spell. I think it's just requires that you like a, a, a creature with which you are familiar, I think is what it. Mm -hmm. Let me just double check the wording. Um a particular creature that you choose that is on the same plane of existence as you. And then they make a wisdom saving throw modified by how well you know the target and the sort of physical connection you have to it. Um, so let's see. This is the first time in a while that you're scrying on someone who wouldn't want you to without an all-powerful scrying machine. Um, okay, so if you have met the target but you do not know her well then there's uh, no modifier from that and then as far as connection you don't have any like possession or likeness of her or anything it's just based on having met her so but if she was in the bottle could i hold the bottle and have that be some kind of a since it, she used to kind of live there mm. <laughs> would that work <laughs> I know it's I'm stretching, hers, but <laughs> I don't think so. I think I would allow that if she had been the last creature in it, but not only right. was she not the last creature in it, but it's actually currently occupied. Right. So I think, Two I think no. Ago. So she's going to get to make a wisdom saving throw basically with no modifier. And it's against, um, I think the crystal ball is 17. Your, your, that DC. Okay. If the crystal yeah. ball is 17. DC 17, yeah. All right. So, wisdom saving throw. Where it is. Oh, interesting. It's 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 not as good as I was expecting. <laughs> no, it's an 11. So, you uh she fails. Um what you see uh is uh this uh old ancient wizened 
woman uh, with kind of a crooked back and walking with a walking stick, making her way along a, uh, a, a dark tr trail in what looks like a swamp. <clears throat> She's not actively causing harm. <laughs> not right this minute, anyway. Maybe she yeah. lived in the swamp. Yeah. Seems like a pretty haggy place to you live. Could, you could like keep an eye on her over time, and if she, you, you know, like gets out of hand, that would be her like natural habitat. So yeah. I think. Yeah, I mean, can't we just keep an eye on her? I mean, time's kind of stopped right now, so we don't know if she's up to anything. But you know, once we get things moving again, we could check in on her and keep an eye on her. Yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe we can <clears throat> table that one for now. Um, do you think we should let our friend that's in the bottle go now? Like, we should send him home? Oh, yeah, I definitely think so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless you guys want to keep him around for what's coming? But I don't... <laughs> I mean, do we, we need to? Fight with no, us, I mean... I think he would, he would just, just like, like go on his own because like the contract's up, right? <clears throat> There's no reason for him to stay. Yeah. Well, I no, I mean, we could just tell him when we let him out, be like, okay, go home. And then he has to because we told him to. What do you guys think? I think we should absolutely let him go. I don't, you know. And he's, you know, I know he's like a murderer and everything, but he's a good guy. Your definition of good is strangely complicated. Sometimes, no, yes. just, he was it's fun. It's not our I like place him. to hold him captive. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I didn't really like it to begin with. It was just to protect, you know, people's families. It was just to get information at the time. Who's got the bottle? Do I got the bottle? I got the no, bottle. Amethyst no, Amethyst has it. Oh. Because it fell out of your grip when we were fighting Drakari. Oh. Amethyst, can I have the bottle? Amethyst gives me the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't think she would hold on to it for any particular reason. No. Nah. She was holding on to it because she didn't want us to misuse it. So what do I do? Do I, do I just do I just let him go here? Just let him out. He can go home on his own. Yeah. If he can travel on his own, Around then they can, the, don't see yeah. why he couldn't. I'll All right, stop hey. as soon as he gets there, but he'll be fine. Right. Home. I unpop the cork. All right. The smoke flows out. And once again, you see the uh, the hulking, tusked face of your Orthon buddy. Friend. Yeah, he uh, he sort of looks around and just says, Oh, wow, so uh, what's up now? I mean, wh wh what are we doing next? Orthopotamus. Yeah, we realized, you know, I think it's time. It's time for you to go on your own been such a great pal and okay well yeah so i mean if that's if that's what you guys want yeah i mean i, mean, I do have do do you know this? work to do uh, yeah. i guess that uh that the previous contract's done but uh you know uh there's always another yeah i'm gonna miss you man and yeah. I you. just don't go <laughs> killing anybody or this could go very badly for you all right uh, do your jobs all right all right bye then everyone and he just turns invisible. Yeah, he's still here. <laughs> um, Cadence, who can sense invisible creatures, does detect that he moves away at that point. You know, he's not just still standing there or something. <laughs> he left. He's gone. He went home. And I mean, you can't tell him not to kill people, Alaric. That's what they do. <clears throat> I mean, I know I get it. It sucks that people kill other people, but there's this whole balance in the universe that we have no control over. As much as it would be nice to say nobody ever kill anybody, then we become lawful good. And that's not who we are. <laughs> I'm not so sure that's quite this far as that, but I just hope it doesn't come back to kill us in the end. He will. True. He probably will. Unless we, you know, somebody takes another hit out on us. But yeah, you know. I don't think he will unless there's a contract involved. Yeah. Yeah. It's not personal. It it's just really business. Good money. Yeah. It's just business. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Well, yeah. I mean, he's he he went off somewhere. All right. You know that at least for the next hour, he is going to do his best to go home. Although he's not and moving anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, he's probably just going on to kill some pig somewhere. Don't say that. <laughs> You're so vindictive. It's entirely possible. Why would he kill a pig? Pigs never did personal. anything to anyone. Yeah, no one's <laughs> going to get it out on a pig. Well, Alaric might. He has Isn't like a, a big issue with pigs. <laughs> he tried to eat my pig once. You weren't there. It was terrible. This pig that Cadence literally bought in order to eat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saved his life. I couldn't eat him. Ah. You never, <laughs> ever meet your food before you eat it. That's just, you don't. I know. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. I always wanted to be one of those kind of rangers who had an animal, but I never could. It just wasn't who I was. So then I met Robert. He's my spirit animal, you guys. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So I suppose we got to talk about this. Uh... <sighs> Big deal that we've got to do next, huh? Yeah. Mm. The time has come. Anybody got a plan? We should I say we just. It, we should at least see on. what it looks like first before trying to make any decisions. It's going to be screwed up. We know that. Time is out of joint. Maybe more than one person is in two places, too. Well, there is. Somebody is. There's two people that are in more than one place. At least two, because you don't know how many mm -hmm. of those cultists that were originally there might still be alive mm -hmm. or around. Or... Yeah. And then there's the, the demon lord. Mm -hmm. Which I'm assuming we can't just convince to turn around and leave. I mean, maybe. Ah, no. And somewhere in Nero's, need some back persuasion. Nero's mind, she hears a ding like a kitchen timer going off. <laughs> Isn't you worried about her biological clock going off? No. <laughs> yeah. No, that thing that thing wants nothing more but to sow destruction and chaos and and presumably exactly so where brought it, it here. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so guys, I think there might be something I can do about that. Oh. Yeah. About what? Which part? Yeah, we were talking about like five things. Is this about the pig? The the biggest part. I think there might okay. be something I can do, but the demon lord. I know this is kind of a big ask, but it's gonna require a lot of faith. In like you or like Rashama? Both of you? Or just trust. Well, I think we're going to have to do some uh, recruiting. I hmm. think that's a good button to, to finish the episode on. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's a little bit shorter than usual tonight, but I think that's okay. Uh, so we're going to uh, leave it there for tonight. We'll be back <coughs> next week for more adventure on so many levels. So many, so many levels. levels. And how many levels le left? Oh, we'll see. Uh, but good night, everyone. <laughs> so many. <laughs>